great detectives of old time radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us over on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to pick up my short story, An Ounce of Prevention. In it, private investigator Jerry Newton takes on a simple bodyguard case for a local school teacher, but soon finds himself facing the moral dilemma of his career. The book is available in the Kindle store. You can also pick up the audiobook at audible.com or in the Apple store. And you can find all my books, audiobooks, and ebooks at store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Follow Bands. The original air date, October the 21st of 1948. And the title is The Flying Murder Case. Greg? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's all the excitement about? Oh, it's you, Johnny. That's right, Greg. Cross you realize you woke me up. That's all right. If it is, it's the only thing that's all right. Greg, I've got something to talk to you about. Couldn't it wait until we're at the airport this afternoon? Seems to me you're my co-pilot on the Center City flight, aren't you? That's right. Only I'm doing you a favor by not talking about this where anybody else can hear it. I want you to keep away from Sue Gordon. Oh, you do? Well, what do you know about that? I don't kid about it, Greg. You're only giving her a run around and she's taking you seriously. And you don't like your girl taking me seriously. Selfish, aren't you? I wouldn't mind if she meant anything to you, but she's too nice a kid for you to be taken... Look, Johnny, I'll see Sue. And she'll see me. Just as often as we like. And there isn't a thing you can do to stop that. Understand? Not a thing. Oh, no? I don't like the way you said that. Well, I've got something to say you're going to like even less. If you don't stop seeing Sue, a certain party is going to learn about you and that certain party's wife. What certain party? You want names? Yeah. Okay, you'll get them. The woman's name is Sylvia Crane. Oh? And her husband is Millard Crane. How do you know about Sylvia and me? I made it my business to find out. And I can make it my business to keep quiet about it, too. If you keep away from Sue. We're going to be a very swell crew when we fly this afternoon, aren't we? <laughs> my co-pilot is ready to cut my throat over the hostess on the ship. Never mind about what happens when we get in the plane. What happens from now on is what I want to know. I don't think it over, Johnny boy. I'll scram out of here while I take a shower and get dressed. I think we can make a deal about the Sylvia Crane situation. Good enough. I don't want to hurt her. All I want to do is keep you from hurting Sue. I know. You said that before. Goodbye, Johnny. I'll see you at the airport. Yeah. Seems to me that maybe Sylvia ought to know something about this. Yeah. Certainly thinks she should. Don't bother, darling. Go on with your packing. I'll take it. Hello? Sylvia, this is Greg. Oh, hello, Barbara. I get it. Your husband's here. Okay, this won't take a second. Listen, we'll have to watch our step for a while. I'll explain why I want to see you. Why, certainly, Barbara. Luncheon tomorrow at the Barton Room. I'll be there. Goodbye. What did Barbara want, Sylvia? Oh, luncheon tomorrow, Miller, that's all. I'll help you finish packing. Uh, you won't need more than one shirt, will you, Millard? 
I think not, darling. I'll pack the other things I need myself. I'm going to miss you, dear. No, darling, I'll be back tonight. Get in the plane in an hour, be at Center City in two. I'll be back before you know. <laughs> but I like the idea of you missing me. It's good for my ego. If you knew how much I miss you, you'd never be able to get your hat on. Ooh, that reminds me. One hat. Oh. In the closet, dear, please. Sure. Hope you close the deal, darling. Won't be any trouble. I still don't see why you don't send one of your men. That's what they're for, isn't it? Here's your hat. Thank you. Yes, I have salesmen and good ones. This is one thing I'm going to take care of myself. All by myself. Hurry back, darling. And please take care of yourself. Oh, I will, Sylvia. Don't worry about that. And I'm not only going to take care of myself. I'm going to take care of somebody else, too. Flight 22 for Center City, now loading at gate 7. Flight 22 for Center City, now loading at gate 7. Good afternoon, seven. Miss. Hello. Hope you have room for one more on this plane. Certainly, sir. Just take any seat at all. I'm Sue Gordon. I'll be your hostess on this trip. How do you do? My name is Crane. Go right in, Mr. Crane. I think you'll find most of the other passengers already aboard. We're about to take off. Yes, I see the pilot and co-pilot coming now. Thank you, Miss Gordon. I'll see you on the pilot. Right oh, Mr. Crane. Hello, Johnny. Hi, sweet. Customers all on board. Practically a full house. Well, all over me, Sue. Of course, Greg. How are you? Leave her alone, Greg. I warned you about bothering Sue, didn't I? She's the only one who knows whether it's a bother or not, Johnny. She knows. Believe me, she knows. Hmm. I like the way she said that. Come on, Johnny. Let's get this plane started. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit, Sue. Do that, Johnny, please. Duck your head, low bridge. Don't worry about me. You're going to have enough trouble looking out for yourself. Come on in. Tell me all about it, lad. What's going to scare big bad me? Skip it. Let's get the plane warmed up. Thanks for telling me my business, but... Go ahead with the checking. Left and right engine. Gas, electric valve set. Check. Control tabs. Set. Mixture control. Idle off. Props. Low pitch. Gyros, altimeters. Set. Battery switch. On. Hold it. Bring hell, boy. Bring hell. Okay. Ignition switch. On. Here we go with engine number one. Car like a kid. Engine number two. Uh-oh. Listen to that. Give me that microphone, will you, Johnny? I'll get the switch from the control tower. Yeah. Thanks. Flight 22 to control tower. Pilot, flight 22 to control tower. Engine missing badly. What do you want us to do? Over. Control tower to flight 22. Inform passengers there will be delay while we transfer them to another ship. Inform passengers they will be transferred and flight will be delayed one hour. That is all. Oh, Johnny, my boy, cut the engine. And right. tell your girlfriend relate our little information to the customers, will you? Tell them we're leaving in an hour. Okay, Greg. Only I wouldn't be so sure that all of us were going to be leaving in an hour. What I want to know is this, Miss Deering. Are you happy in your work? In my work? Yes, Vance, I'm very happy. A job with the greatest private investigator in the country? Who wouldn't be happy? You'll forgive me for momentarily reveling in that compliment and secondarily questioning the sincerity of it. Your face sort of belies that happiness. You said you might call me last night, Vance. What happened? Did Markham call you about a murder? No such good luck, Miss Deering. I haven't seen the district attorney in days. Seems that I became involved at dinner over a discussion concerning the merits of modern as against medieval architecture. Quite interesting. <laughs> so interesting that you forgot all about the fact that I was waiting for your call. You didn't wait too long. You went to the movies, and not later than nine o'clock. Who told you? Nobody. There's a single ticket stub from the Kingsway Theater in your bag. The date is on it and your purse is open. The last feature at the Kingsway starts at 9 o'clock. So, you see? 
Yes, I see. All right. <laughs> Vance, does anything ever escape you? Of course, my dear. Many things. Now, inasmuch as I have explained how I knew you didn't wait too long for me, am I excused for last night? You were excused last night for last night, and you know it. <laughs> hello there, you two. Oh, oh apparently hello. I'm interrupting something pleasant. How are you? Hiya, Markham. Welcome to our little city. I hope I know why you're here. Yes, you do, Vance. Who was it this time, my friend? What puzzles me is that you don't know. You always seem to be able to anticipate everything. It was an airlines pilot, Vance, a man named Gregory Allen. I was on my way to the airport and dropped by to pick you up. I'm glad you did. What are the particulars, Markham? Well, from what we've been able to gather so far, this Allen was kind of a ladies' man. Oh? He had a romance going with the airplane hostess, Sue Gordon, and this was resented by her boyfriend, his co-pilot, Johnny Taylor. Mmm, that sounds like a nice, happy group. Remind me to travel by train hereafter. Oh, that isn't all. The dead man also was going around with a woman named Sylvia Crane, and her husband was aboard the plane. You're going a little too quickly for me, Markham. Was Mr. Gregory Allen killed in the plane? No. It seems that when he was about to take off, one of the motors went bad, so everyone was to be switched to another plane. That would have meant a delay of about an hour. So Allen went into the pilot's room in the administration building, and that's where his body was found. In the pilot's room, with the lights out. Hmm. The murderer probably turned them out to delay the finding of the body. When did all this happen, Markham? Not 15 minutes ago. I've had all the passengers held, although they're all quite anxious to get to their destinations. Good. You had the co-pilot and the hostess held, too, I imagine. Of course. Sergeant Heath is there now. In that case, Markham, I might say that within a half hour, we should be there, too. Good day, Miss Deering. I have the co-pilot and the hostess outside, Vance, just as you asked. Are you ready to question them now? Not at the moment, Markham. I want to look around at this murder room a bit. Of course. This room was built for tall men, Markham. Top shelf on that bookcase is out of the reach of an ordinary-sized man. Pilots are generally tall, Vance, and only pilots were permitted in here. Yes, I know. That light switch is back pretty far and very high on the wall. And even the easy chairs seem to be built to accommodate long-legged individuals. No question about that. Tell me, Vance, how long do you want the passengers held? Some of them are complaining about being held up. Well, I don't believe I'll have to see them all, Markham. Although I'll know better after I talk to the co-pilot. Ask him to come in, will you please? The hostess, too? Might as well. Right, Vance. Uh, the co-pilot's name is Johnny Taylor, and the hostess is Sue Gordon. I'll tell them to come in. Oh, Mr. Taylor. Yeah? Miss Gordon. Yes? Yeah? Please come in here. It's all right, dear. I'll handle everything. Vance, this is Mr. Taylor and Miss Gordon. Philo Vance. How do you do? All right. Miss Gordon, tell me something. Were you ever in this room before... No, neither hostesses nor passengers are allowed in here, Mr. Vance. Only pilots. That means that you've been here, Mr. Taylor. That's right. Vance, you're wasting your time with us. We don't know anything about who killed Greg. No? What makes you think I ought to believe that? Because there's somebody being held outside who had a real reason for killing him, Millard Crane. Greg was fooling around with his wife. Oh, that's very interesting. Markham, would you ask Mr. Crane to be out in the hall in a moment, please? Certainly. I'll get him there, Vance. I understand the late Mr. Allen also liked you, Miss Gordon. Yes, I believe he did. But you are supposed to be Mr. Taylor's girlfriend. She is my girl. The only reason I told you about Crane was so you'd know who your real suspect is. Is that so? Yeah. You'd better stop, Mr. Taylor, because you're beginning to sound like my real suspect at the moment. Oh, Vance, Millard Crane, the man you wanted to see, is right outside the door. Good. Come on, Miss Gordon. All right. Mr. Taylor. All right. Thanks, Markham. Right. Uh, right this way, everybody. Mr. Crane, I want to see you. And I want to see you, too. I understand it's because of you that we're being delayed. The delay will only be temporary. Mr. Crane, I've just been told by Mr. Taylor here that your wife and the dead pilot were quite friendly. You were told that, were you? Yes. Well, if they were friendly, Mr. Vance, I didn't know a thing about it. I don't believe them. You're the young man who told that to Mr. Vance, aren't you? That's right. What about it? You really ought to have proof before you make a Don't remark. Don't talk like to that. me about oh, proof. Both of you. I was under the impression that I was conducting this investigation. Let me understand something. Are all three of you going on that flight to Center City? I'm co pilot on the plane and Sue's the host. And I've got to get there on business. Very well, then. Go ahead, all three of you. You're all free to go. Come on, Sue. Let's get out. All right. Vance, I don't think I understand why you let them all go. They were your principal suspects. That's right. 
And they're all going to Center City. But they'll all be back. Markham, would you see what you can do about getting me a reservation on that plane? You think you can find out something about this murder in Center City? Possibly. Besides, I haven't been to Center City in almost a year. This is District Attorney Markham. The flying murder case opened when airlines pilot Greg Allen was stabbed in the pilot's room at the airport. Final Vance's suspects include Sue Gordon, airlines hostess, her boyfriend, co-pilot Johnny Taylor, and Millard Crane, whose wife was friendly with the dead man. Vance took a plane trip to Center City with all three suspects, but has returned to town where he is again in the airline's administration building, questioning Johnny Taylor and Sue Gordon. You see, Mr. Taylor and yes. Mrs. Gordon, yes. there isn't anything I can ask you that would help me. But I am quite certain that there is something that you can tell me that will be important. I don't know who murdered Greg, Mr. Vance. If I did, I'd tell you. Believe me, I would. At the moment, I'm not quite as anxious to have you tell me who murdered him as I am to have you supply me with some proof. What does that mean, Vance? It means I think I know who killed Mr. Allen. Where are you going, Miss Gordon? Stop! So They can't make me talk. I won't let them. I'm going to get out of here. Well... She had nothing to do with the murder, Mr. Van. She's just scared, that's all. Honest, that's all it is. That might be the reason she left here so suddenly. It isn't terribly important, though. I can have Markham pick her up almost any time. Mr. Taylor. Yeah? What can you tell me about Mr. Millard Crane? I told you about Greg and Crane's wife. What else could I tell you? You might tell me that you saw Crane fooling with one of the motors on the plane that was originally scheduled to take him to Center City. But I didn't. And besides, what would that prove? It would prove that Crane wanted Flight 22 delayed so he could murder Greg Allen while the new plane was being readied. That means you know that Crane killed Greg? No, but I can understand how you might want me to think that. Oh, I see what you mean. Look, Vance, maybe I was sore at the way Greg treated Sue. But I wouldn't murder him for that. No. There have been murders for a less reason, Johnny. In fact, this might be one of those murders. You haven't told me anything about your trip to Center City, Millie, darling. Was it successful? Very, Sylvia, dear. Very successful. I'm glad. There was a little delay at the airport before we got started, but it's all. Delay? What sort of delay? Oh... One of the engines on the plane went bad, and we had to wait around an hour. Oh, well, that wasn't too bad, was it, dear? No, but it seems that while we were waiting around, the pilot on the plane was murdered. The pilot? Yes. Did you read about it? Or hear it on the radio? I've been out all afternoon shopping. What pilot was it, Millie? Oh, dear, please, don't be so upset. Of course, it was too bad, but after all, he was a stranger. He was a stranger, wasn't he, Sylvia? Who was it, Millard? What was his name? Pilots? Greg Allen. Greg! Oh. You knew him? How unfortunate. For him. Millard, did you know I knew Greg Allen? Did you? Maybe. You did know it, Millard. You killed Greg. Now, please, dear. You're hysterical. Of course I'm hysterical. Greg did. You killed him. You killed him. I wouldn't say I killed him. Philo Vance and the police have three suspects. (laughs) Of course, I'm one of them. But the other two, Johnny Taylor and Sue Gordon, both have pretty good reasons for killing him. I don't care how good their reasons were. They didn't kill him. You did. Sylvia, dear. You were the principal motive if any of the three of us killed your friend, Greg. And if, as you believe, I killed him, it would be only a self-preservation for me to kill you, too. You wouldn't dare. I'll tell... Oh. Yes, dear? You were saying... Nothing... I'd better answer the door. I think you'd better control yourself and wipe away those tears. Don't you? I'll be in the library. Good evening. Mrs. Crane? Why, yes. Mrs. Crane, I'm Philo Vance. Is your husband at home? Why, why yes. Would you please tell him I'm here? All right, I... Uh, just one moment, Mrs. Crane. Yes? I notice you're upset. I hope not too upset to corroborate one fact. What is that? Were you and a man named Greg Allen friendly? I'll tell Mr. Crane you're here. Thank you, Mrs. Crane. And thank you for answering that question by not answering it. 
Millard. Millard, dear. Come in. I didn't mean to interrupt you, dear, but Philo Vance is here and he wants to speak to you. Well, come in. I have nothing to hide. Come in, Mr. Vance. Hello, Mr. Crane. Sorry to have to drop in on you like this, but it was important. Yes, Mr. Vance? Mr. Crane, you took a plane to Center City today. Why? I had business there. That's the only reason? Of course. Did you transact your business, Mr. Crane? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Why? Nothing. Except that it's very strange where business is being transacted these days. What do you mean? Well, after you left the airport at Center City, I followed you. Yes, I know. You knew that, did you? Did you also know that I was in back of you when you went to a movie in Center City? Never forgive you for that, Crane. Bad picture. So I went to a picture show in Center City. And unless that's illegal, Vance, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. It isn't illegal, and you may invite me to leave if you like, of course. But may I extend you an invitation, too? Would you meet me and District Attorney Markham at the airport in exactly two hours, please? Bring in that airplane hostess, Miss Williams, and then come back here to take notes, please. Yes, Mr. Markham. Miss Gordon, come in, please. Very well. Sit down, Miss Gordon. Yeah, that's better. Now then, I have a list of several questions I want to ask you. Miss Williams will take down your answers, so please remember to tell the truth. What do you want to know, Mr. Markham? I've already told you why I ran away from Mr. Vance at the airport. I was afraid he'd have me arrested, and I didn't want to be arrested. You're not arrested, Miss Gordon, merely held for questioning. If your answers are satisfactory, you may be released. Now, tell me, were you ever in the room where Greg Allen was found dead? Never. That room was only for the pilots. Nobody else was allowed in. I told Mr. Vance that. I just wanted it on the record, that's all. Now, another question. Did you hate Greg Allen because his intentions were not serious? No, I didn't. I couldn't hate him. Mm, I imagine Johnny Taylor knew that, too. What's that? Uh, nothing, nothing. Just thinking out loud. Mr. Markham, what's the reason for these questions? The real reason, I mean. You want the truth, Miss Gordon? Of course. Well, then, ask Philo Vance. We're going to meet him at the airport now, and I have a hunch that this case might hang on your answers to these questions. Oh, Markham. Markham. Hello there, Vance. Hello, Mr. Vance. Well, I brought Miss Gordon to the administration building, just as you asked. Thank you, Markham. I've brought Mr. Johnny Taylor. Sue, have they done anything to you? Of course not, Johnny. Everything is going to be all right, believe me. I invited Mr. Crane to be here, Markham. In fact, that should be the gentleman in question coming now. And it is. Hello there, Mr. Crane. Well, let's get this over with. I'm here. Somebody please tell me why. I will, Mr. Crane. Now, listen, everyone, please. We're standing at the door of the pilot's reading room. In this room, Greg Allen was stabbed to death. Is that supposed to be news, Vance? Hardly. For purposes of my own, I find it necessary to bring you all here. The lights in the pilot's reading room are off. I'm going to open the door leading to it now. <laughs> now, this is beginning to be funny, Vance. I wouldn't start laughing just yet if I were you, Miss Gordon. I ask you all to look into the room from this doorway. That's a good trick if you can do it. The room's pitch black. You can turn on the lights if you like, Mr. Crane. All right. You want the lights on? There. Thank you. Now, Johnny, would you go in and turn them off? Sure. Is that all you want me to do? There. Close the door, Markham, please. Of course. Now what, Vance? Now, Markham, I have proof to convict the murderer of Greg Allen. Markham, you can arrest Mr. Millard Crane. <laughs> Ready, Miss Deering? With eagerness, anticipation, and everything else the secretary's supposed to have. No curiosity. Oh, well, that's standard equipment with Gal's Vance. You know that. <laughs> By the way, I think I know how you knew Crane was guilty. I don't know what proof you finally got. Tell me first how I knew it was Crane. Oh, well, I think I followed that. 
He had no reason to go to that airport in the first place, inasmuch as his business trip was a phony, which you found out by trailing him to a movie in Center City. That's correct. And now you want to know about the proof. Well, for the purposes of our records, yes. Well, then, if that's the only reason, the explanation isn't important. After all, he has confessed, you know. And so has the mechanic he bribed to fix one of the engines on the plane Greg Allen was to fly. Vance, you know I'm dying of curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> that's different. In that case, listen. Who was allowed in the pilot's reading room? You mean where Greg Allen was killed? Mm-hmm. Nobody but pilots, of course. Everybody kept insisting that all through this case. That's right. But still, today, when we were out at the scene of the crime, and I asked Mr. Crane to please put on the lights, he walked into the dark room and, without a second's hesitation, snapped them on. Which meant that he'd been there before. Correct. The light switch was in an unusual position, way back on the wall. He'd been there to kill Alan. After he killed him, he snapped off the lights to delay discovery of the body. Mm Mm-hmm. When he turned on the lights for me, well, that was all the proof I needed. Oh, this was an unusual case, Vance. The principal suspect turned out to be the killer. Mm -hmm. The whole thing was awfully simple, though, wasn't it? Not that it isn't always after you explain it. Thank you, Miss Deering. For that, you may have the rest of the day off. Oh, thank you, sir. Of course, it's after nine o'clock, but thanks just the same. I think I'll go wash up. Inasmuch as Mr. Millard Crane is all washed up, and so is the flying murder case. not nearly as impressive a reveal as he and apparently she thought it was. And it should suffice to say, I I don't know if this warning is necessary, but I'll go ahead and say it. Don't take relationship advice from this show, guys. Because I'm fairly certain the whole when your wife slash girlfriend calls you out for standing them up, point out an interesting deduction about them in order to appease them is not a generally recommended approach. And this is one of those episodes where Philo Vance won, but I think he was taking on an unarmed man in a battle of wits. Because this guy, he... Uh, makes up a business trip and flies to the city and doesn't do any business. Which is like the easiest thing in the world for the police to check. And to be honest, the police should have spotted that in asking him a question. Well, what business do you have? Just, just business? I mean, arrange an actual business trip. Even if it gets messed up by the murder. But to not have any business in the city at all is just a huge misplay that Garadini was going to be caught eventually, though I do like the way that the murder was caught, because it was kind of abrupt, but it did make sense. And that hard-to-find light switch, I think, is a great clue. We've got one of those here at our place, and if anyone is able to find that light switch, and it's not my wife and I, it took us a week anyway to find it, 
they find it right away, then, yeah, they're the killer. All right, well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to N Patreon supporter since August 2016, currently supporting us at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. And that will do it for today. If you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell to get updates whenever a new video is posted. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Philo Vance. And coming up tomorrow is an adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, where... Expense account item one. $18.90, train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City. I arrived in the afternoon, registered at the hotel, and rented a car, which I drove to the 5th Precinct Police Station, where I met Lieutenant Roseman, an old friend. I haven't seen you in a long time, Johnny. How's it going? Oh, can't complain. You're a lieutenant now. Getting up in the world. Hmm. Well, how about filling me in on this post killing? Sure. Woman's name is Teresa Post. Married to William Post, banker. She was found last night in her apartment, stabbed four times. Gag shoved in the mouth, apartment robbed. A private detective named Sachs found her, huh? Uh-huh. And uh, Mrs. Post's lawyer. George Simon. Right. They both arrived at the apartment about the same time. Both had appointments with the victim. They got worried when she didn't show up. Found the janitor, and he opened the apartment for them. They discovered her lying on the floor in the bedroom. What was missing? According to her husband, all her jewels, about $15,000 worth, Also a cloth coat. My boss said you were considering the husband. Yeah. Three days ago, they had an argument and separated. The wife was filing for a divorce. She'd suspected Post playing around for some time, so she hired Sachs, a private detective. Sachs got the evidence, and she confronted her husband with it. He moved out and into a hotel. Sachs and the lawyer were supposed to meet her at 8 o'clock so that Sachs could turn over the evidence on her husband to the lawyer. Well, what makes you think it's the husband? Well... Robbery looks phony. The jewel's okay, but the coat, the cloth coat, the only item of clothing that was stolen. Yeah? There was a full-length mink and a stole left in the closet. Oh, mm-hmm. The husband got an alibi? Sure. The woman he was seeing, the one who busted up the marriage. Oh, who is she? Well, the name of Hughes, Jane Hughes. Lives at 109 West 61st Street. And she claims Post was with her at the time of the murder? And I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.